Now, we've also seen, um, you know, almost the same day, a release uh, of a decision uh, where actually states don't get to make decisions about concealed carry gun laws. And a lot of analysts are suggesting, well, this is inconsistent because in one it's about states' rights and, and the other it's not. Uh, surely that's not the way the justices see it. What's the argument here that, that leads to that ruling? Right. So there is this amazing crossing that is happening in American life where the individual right to bear arms now looms very large and has struck down some state gun control laws and may very well strike down more. And meanwhile, the right to access abortion, which was rooted in the 14th Amendment, is gone. So there is no question that that is a huge sea change. The justices think that the Second Amendment text means that the right to bear arms is individual. What they said in the case about New York's gun safety law is that unless a state regulation is firmly rooted in the nation's history and tradition, it's going to be struck down. And then the justices in the abortion case said, well, abortion is not rooted in the nation's history and tradition. And that's really the only question that matters here because it's not in the text of the Constitution. So that's how the justices kind of square these two decisions. Do you think these justices are being honest? Are they actually being rooted in broader principles of jurisprudence or are they, are they just playing politics? Well, I mean, I think whether you think they are being consistent begins with whether you think the interpretation of the Second Amendment that they claim is rooted in the nation's history and tradition is actually correct. So when the first uh, big Second Amendment decision came down um, a decade ago, there was a big fight over the historical meaning of the Second Amendment and whether the individual right to bear arms really was there versus a militia-based right. And a lot of constitutional historians think that the dissent by Justice Stevens had the better of that historical argument, but it was Justice Scalia who had five votes. So I find that argument against the individual right to bear arms pretty persuasive, and that means that, to me, this new decision about New York's law looks pretty shaky. Um, when you look at Roe and Casey, the abortion decisions that we're talking about today, it really depends on what you think of the idea that abortion is fundamental to women's liberty and equality. And, you know, that is a question that has less to do, I think, with the actual text of the Constitution and more to do with how we interpret these kind of capacious phrases about equal protection and, and liberty and whether we think that their meanings evolve over time. Now, of course, it's disturbing that views of the legitimacy of the Supreme Court are presently at historic lows, but you would expect that simply given how divided the country presently is politically and the parties. Beyond that, do you see the Supreme Court today as more ideological? Do you see it as less capable? Um, do you see the people that populate it as less willing to actually do the legitimate business of the, war, of the country's um, top judicial institution? I think this conservative majority is pretty maximalist. They have shown this with the um, New York gun case and the Mississippi abortion case by being willing to issue really sweeping rulings that change the lives of many Americans. So then the question becomes, is that conservative majority enough in tune with the American people that they can be said to in some way be carrying out the will of the people as well as um, making rulings that are consistent with the Constitution? Because in the end, even though the justices are not elected, they're not democratically accountable in the same way, they are still supposed to be in line with the country's values. There's some notion, some connection there. Um, otherwise, they really they risk delegitimizing themselves and they risk the kinds of discussions we've been having about changing the whole shape of the court. So that's what I'm looking at, this question of if the court lurches far from public opinion, what, if anything, reigns it back in?